I think one of the most important aspects of being a field tech is staying organized. One of the hardest things to do is to keep track of all the small supplies and parts and tools that you're going to have to use on your job sites. The more time it takes you to find things, or if you don't have things with you and you have to leave the site and go off clock to go find things, then that is time that you're not making money. That's why I put together these four large organizational tubs and these smaller three organizational tubs. I do this so I can locate things so that I know that I have certain things with me at all times. I take the time to label them and to keep them stocked. I've made sheets on these so that I can pass this information on to you very clearly. I have these available on my website at fieldtechacademy.com. Now I'm going to go into more specifics about each tub so you understand my organizational process. First tub I want to talk about is my telephony tub. I have all my compartments labeled so I know exactly what goes in what place and it's something that's repeatable for you. In this tub, I always keep a 66 block and a mounting bracket. I have scotch locks in one compartment that I use for splicing non-network cable. I keep RJ11 keystones in one compartment. I always keep spare RJ11 connectors. I use this container for dolphin connectors, which is another style of cable splicing. I have one compartment for RJ31 surface mount biscuits. You'll use these for alarm isolation. I have another compartment that I use for RJ48 biscuit jacks. You'll use those for T1 loop back. I always keep a few spare, you know, what they used to call silver satin or basically phone cables. So I always have those on hand. I also like to keep a few spare wall plate blanks so that I can fill in a wall plate. If all I have is a three port wall plate on hand, but I'm only using two ports, I'll use a blank to fill that hole. I always keep bridge clips for the 66 block in a Ziploc bag. They're too small to leave loose or else they'll travel all and get all mixed up and everything else. I always keep a compartment full of spare wall plate screws so that if I run into a wall plate package that doesn't have screws, then I have spares. I use this compartment for T1 loopback plugs. I always like to keep drywall screws on hand in this tub so that I have them easily accessible in case I need to mount something. And I also keep DSL filters on hand just in case I run into DSL, which is becoming less prevalent in today's world. So that is my telephony bin. The next organizer that I wanna talk about is my networking bin. I like to use the DeWalt brand and a specific model of them for my organizers for several reasons, and I'll go into that. And in the description, I'll put a link to these on Amazon. That way you can get them as well. Why do I like these types of bins? Number one, they have metal clips on the front. A lot of these that you buy in the store are gonna have plastic clips. They break easy. They come apart. I like these because they're durable. I like the fact that they have removable bins, so you can actually do some reorganization. You can actually slide things around move them in different positions. I also like that the doors on the top have bevels in them. And so when these go down, they're gonna hold your compartments in place. And they're also going to try to prevent things from traveling from bin to bin. These are also stackable and linkable. So you're gonna throw these on a dolly or on a cart. Then you don't have to worry about them coming apart and you can transform them all together and they stay together. Let's talk about the networking bin. In my networking bin, I keep single port white and ivory surface mounts. I also keep two port white and ivory surface mounts. In this bin, generally when I'm doing networking, it seems very common that I'm mounting equipment to the wall. So I like to keep drywall anchors I don't like the conical shaped anchors because you will make a hole and put them in and put your screws in and they, they just don't hold. These will hold a tremendous amount of weight per anchor. In this divider, I keep my RJ45 connectors. I'm still keeping Cat5 keystones as well as Cat6 keystones. Cat6 keystones are a little more expensive, so I like to keep the Cat5 so I can use them when the job does not require cat six i personally use a quick jack brand i do that because you can punch all eight conductors at the same time and they will send you a tool for free if you order i think 50 or 100 dollars worth of keystones great little tool i'll put a link to the description for those as well 
In this divider, I like to keep spare label cartridges for my label maker. It is a pain in the butt to be out in the field and to run out of labels and then have to go off site to go grab labels. So I always try to keep spares in here. Even though I like to use the QuickJack brand for keystones, you are going to run into jobs where a customer is going to send their own keystones and their own products. You're going to end up with all these different brands like Leviton and Panduit, and Ortronics, these random things that you may not use, but I love to accumulate things because you never know when you're going to need something like that on a one-off job. So I will save this divider for my random keystones that don't really match up with my normal set. That is my networking bin. The next two tubs I want to talk about are my hardware tubs. I use this tub for machine threaded screws, nuts, bolts, things that you would use for like TV mounting, wall plates, anything that's machine threaded. The other tub that I'll show you next is for more aggressive threads for mounting things into metal and wood and into concrete. The machine thread organizer that I use, I keep washers. So I will have lock washers, I will have small washers, medium sized, even large washers, and then I will use fender washers as well. You're going to need fender washers in a lot of applications because you don't want that bolt head to be able to slip through this like it would on a much larger washer. I use this tub for all the machine threaded bolts that you'll get when you're setting up a TV mount to a TV. Those packs send you multiple sizes. You only need to use typically one size per mount in TV but it's nice to keep the spares because you may run into a situation to where you get on another job and maybe they didn't send them or you happen to have the right size and the correct size wasn't sent with that particular mount. I use this bin for long bolts and nuts. I use this one for short nuts and bolts. I use this bin for kind of miscellaneous. Generally, I will put like rack ears for network equipment in this tub and I will grab, like if I end up with some spare little ceiling mount for APs, things like that, or anything else that just doesn't fit in any other bin I will throw in this. This bin I will use for longer wall mount screws. A lot of times you'll run into a situation to where you have maybe double drywall. For some reason that wall mounting bracket may be recessed into the wall too far for the standard sized wall plate screws to reach. I like to keep on hand some one and a half inch screws so that if I run into double drywall or a recessed bracket I can still mount that wall plate. These screws are six 32 by one and a half inch. I like to keep that sticker on here in case I need to go buy some then I don't have to guess when I'm going to the store what size I need to buy that matches all the wall plate brackets. In this organizer I keep my more aggressive threaded items for getting into wood and metal and into concrete. In this bin I keep my lag bolts. In these three bins I keep my tap cons for cement. So I've got kind of my shorter, medium, long lengths. In this bin, I like to keep my short self-tapping screws. This bin, I will keep my longer self-tapping screws. In this bin, I will keep my C-clamps for mounting to red iron. And you always need the kitchen sink. So this tub I will use for just random aggressive threaded screws that don't really match up to any of my other patterns here. In this bin, I will keep my standard drywall screws. In this tub, I like to keep my longer drywall or wood screws. Sometimes you need something a little bit longer to get the job done. In this tub, I keep some very specific screws for a specific purpose. A lot of times you're going to run into pieces of equipment that have that circular hole with the slot in it that need to mount to walls. If you don't have the right head on a screw, you're not going to be able to mount those very easily. So I found that this particular set will work really well with that. They are metric eight. I generally get one and a half inch. The shaft on these is small enough that most of the times it will actually go into that circular hole and it will slide up into the slot easily so you can mount things on the wall. The last thing that I want to talk about are my three small organizers. I have one organizer that I keep in my drill bag and I keep spare two inch tips, Phillips flathead, pretty straightforward. I keep adapters that I can put in my drill to use for sockets. I also buy a small set of socket adapters for a drill. You can't really buy these easily in a lot of different sizes so that's why I keep the different socket adapters so that I can use a standard socket set with my drill. Next thing you always want to have on hand when you're doing networking is a variety of rack screws. You know, a lot of times you're dealing with racks and there are multiple types of threads and I try to keep different sizes, different thread types. Another container that I always keep on hand is a battery organizer. I do that so that number one, my batteries are in one place so I can always find them. Number two, I will buy my batteries in bulk on Amazon. That way I'm not paying retail prices for small packages. 
Some batteries are also harder to find locally. This is how I've set mine up based on my tool sets and my needs. Obviously, if you have a different cable tester, your battery may be different than mine. I'm gonna keep triple A's and double A's and nine volts because a lot of my testing tools use nine volts. I use CR2032s, which are your basic CMOS batteries. My cable tester uses these batteries, a set of four, so I always keep those on hand. Obviously, you wanna keep whatever your tools use. It keeps the batteries separated so that they're not making contact with other pieces in your tool bags. You can find them, number one. Number two, they don't get shorted out, and if they do corrode or bust, then they're in a container and they're not leaking out all over your other tools. And that is my battery bin. To me, organization is key. Knowing where all of these small parts are in your work van, not having them loose and floating around in cardboard boxes and different containers, having everything labeled, you want to be able to locate these things quickly, know that you have them on hand, know that you have pretty standard set of supplies so that you can stay on the job site, and maximize your billable hours. My goal with Field Tech Academy is to help aspiring technicians see what they can do and to help experienced technicians have higher performance. If you got value today from what I shared, please like the video and subscribe to the channel so that you can learn more about how to be an independent field tech. Don't forget to check out our website at fieldtechacademy.com. I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as some other products that can accelerate your quest to become self-employed as a technician. As always, let's get you out in the field making money. I'll see you in the next video.